Hey everyone, in this video, we're going to be talking about something called the side splitter theorem. This is basically a theorem that says if a line segment connects or crosses two sides of a triangle and it's parallel to the third side, then it splits the two sides it connects proportionally. So if you look in these diagrams here, you can see that there are side splitters pointed out. So it could be a line or a segment. And basically, it's parallel to the third side. You could see those parallel markings. And it splits the two sides that it connects to, so like this side and this side, proportionally. So if we look at the sample below here, basically what this means is we don't have to separate the triangles and redraw them and figuring out figure out the corresponding sides. We could just say, okay, well, on this left side, we have two and a four. And on this right side, we have 3 and an x. And when we cross multiply, we get 2x equals 12, or x is equal to 6. So we're able to quickly find the value of x by setting up a proportion. We could have also found the value of x even quicker than that by just kind of looking for a pattern. So ratios are often recognized as patterns. You may have noticed that 2 and 4 indicates a pattern that's times two. And if I do that pattern over here, I will get that same answer of x is equal to six. All right, so let's look at some sample questions. Um, I'm gonna be using my calculator on the right-hand side so you can follow any work there too. All right, number one, solve for x. So we see we have a side splitter. So eight and x is going to be equal to 9, or 8 over x is equal to 9 over 4.5. We're going to cross multiply here. So when we do that, I'm going to get 9x is equal to 36, and that gives me that x is 4. Okay. You may have also noticed the pattern or the ratio here, that this is basically times a half. And if I follow that over here, I will get that 4 again. All right, number 2. This one looks slightly different because over on the left-hand side, we're given that whole big side of 12, but we could do some very quick subtraction here and realize that this piece, and that's this piece that I'm kind of like covering in pink here, that piece is 9, right? 12 minus 3. And now we can set up our proportion. So 3 over 9 is equal to x over 6. We're going to cross multiply 9x equals 18, and x is equal to 2. All right, let's keep going. Number three, same idea, just the picture is rotated a bit. So five and four, that's one side, and eight and x is the other. So we're gonna cross multiply, we get five x is equal to 32. And that's okay if we get a decimal here, that happens, it's not a problem. And we get that x is equal to 6.4. So again, notice that here's our side splitter. It's splitting the side it connects, so this side that I'm scribbling over, and this side proportionally. That's why we create a proportion to solve. All right, number four. This one's set up nicely for us. 10 over x equals 12 over 1.5. We're going to cross multiply. 12 times x is 12x. 10 times 1.5 is 15. And when I divide this here, I get that x is equal to 1.25. Number five, a little bit different here because we can see there's actually two side splitters. So we have this one here and we have this one here that I'm bolting over. We also are solving for two variables. We're solving for x and y. It doesn't matter which one you do first. I'm just going to do x first and go alphabetically. So in order to do that, I'm going to just for a second, and I'm going to erase this in a moment, but I'm just going to pretend that part doesn't exist there. You could almost cover it up with your hand too. And then it looks like the other problems we've been doing. 3 and x, that's the one side split proportionally, and 5 and 7. If I cross multiply, I get 5x is equal to 21, and x is equal to 4.2. And I'm going to just go put 4.2 over in the diagram here as well. Now I'm going to solve for y. When I solve for y, I'm definitely going to be using this 4 and the y on the bottom, kind of like the bottom layer of this triangle. 
And it's up to you. Do you want to pick the 3 and the 5 again? Do you want to pick the 4.2 and the 7? It doesn't make a difference. I'm going to go with the 3 and 5 again. So it's almost like I'm pretending this layer doesn't exist now. And it's 3 over 4 is equal to 5 over y. 3y is equal to 20. And this is going to give us a decimal or a repeating uh, decimal here, I should say. So I'm going to just leave that as 20 over 3. So y in this case is 20 thirds. Number six, this is the first problem we've seen like this. It's a trick that we want to be very careful about because what I see a lot of people do is 8 over 4 equals x over 15. And I'm going to tell you that that is an incorrect proportion on this problem. Here's why that is. The way we're writing these proportions is by using the sides that the side splitter is connected to, that it's splitting. So yeah, that is the 8 and the 4, but it should be these two sides that I'm circling here. But those are blank, right? We don't have those values. So I have to do something a little bit different here. So what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to go back to things we've learned before about similar polygons and their corresponding sides. And I'm going to draw these two triangles separate from one another. So this side is 15, and you can see the bottom of this triangle is 12, right? 8 and 4 gives me 12. So if you're unsure of how I'm doing this, here's my small triangle that has sides 8 and x. I'll color code this here so you can see. And then here's my big triangle that has sides 12 and 15. Now that I have it separated, I could write a proportion. So 8 and 12 are corresponding, side or their side lengths are corresponding and x and 15, and we're going to cross multiply. So 12x is equal to 8 times 15 is going to give me 120, divide by 120, divide by 12, and I get x is equal to 10 here. Okay, so again, anytime the side splitter is labeled with a number or a variable you can't use that shortcut anymore because we're not looking at the two sides it connects to anymore we're looking at the actual side splitter itself so in that case you're going to separate the triangles all right number seven if triangle abc is similar to triangle ade which equation is true Okay, if we take a look at this here, we're going to look at the four answer choices and the proportions in each of them and see if pieces correspond to one another. Because remember, when you have similar triangles, the corresponding sides are proportional. All right, A says AD to DB is equal to EC. I'm going to scribble as I mark it here, and AE. If you notice, we went down this side of the triangle and up this way. That's not consistent. Those are not labeling the corresponding sides appropriately. So A is not the correct answer. And I'm basically going to keep doing this till I can find corresponding sides that work out. And eventually, I will get my correct answer here. Okay. All right. So let's look at B. AB is this whole side to BC, the bottom. Then AD and DE, that looks correct. That looks like it's the big triangles left side and bottom, the small triangles left side and bottom. Kind of rem reminds me of question six, just kind of a rotated version. So choice B is going to be our correct answer here. All right, for our last one in this video, AD is 8, DB is 12, AE is 2X minus 4, and AC is X plus 3. We're going to find the length of AC. So on this, we see that it's set up correctly or the way we want it to. The side splitter is not labeled, but instead the sides it connects to is labeled. And we're going to just set up our proportion. Only difference here is we have a little bit more algebra involved. So we're going to cross multiply 8 times X plus 3. Distribute that 8 across the X plus 3. So that's 8X plus 24. 
the other diagonal is going to give me 24x minus 48 once I distribute the 12 across. If you're unsure what I mean about distributing, think about it like this. We really have 8 times x plus 3, and we have 12 times 2x minus 4. And now let's solve our multi-step equation here. So let's get the variables on the same side. All right, so we get 72 is equal to 16x, and x is 4.5. But notice this question didn't ask us for x. It says find the length of AC, so we're going to have to plug back in. So AE is 2x minus 4, so 2 times 4.5 minus 4, that's 5. This is 4.5 plus 3, so 7.5. So the total length of AC is 12.5. So I'll write that over here. AC is equal to 12.5. Hey, I hope by watching this video that you understand a little bit more about side splitter theorem and how it splits the sides it connects to proportionally. Thank you for watching.